Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. Today we are talking about composite functions. Uh, this section also has uh, a few other things in it, uh, which I am saving for Math 2. So hopefully you'll get those in your Math 2 class. Uh, specifically, only two of these objectives I'm going to go over. Uh, we are working towards section 4.7, which is about inverse trigonometric functions. Uh, these things here that you see crossed out uh, don't really relate to inverse trigonometric functions, so I'll save those for pre-calc. Okay, so I have an analogy that I really love for uh, composite functions, and it has to do with uh, what I do every Christmas. So uh, what I do every Christmas is I get on a plane, let's say from uh, Sacramento, and I take a flight back to New Jersey to visit the family. But I usually don't get a direct flight. Usually I have to stop somewhere like Denver. Okay? So my analogy, and let's say I'm going to good old Newark, New Jersey. Okay? So my analogy for composite functions is I take one flight from Sacramento to Denver, and let's say that uh, I get on in Sacramento at gate five, and I get off in Denver at gate 10, okay? And I'm gonna call this flight G, okay? Then hopefully they give me enough time to get something to eat in Denver, and then I get back on the plane, and I fly to Newark, let's say on flight F, and let's say that flight F takes me from gate 10 in Denver to gate 20 in Newark, okay? So, uh, these are two functions. Uh, it just so happens that function G takes the number five to the number 10, so we would say that G of five is 10, and the function F takes the number uh, 10 to the number 20, so we would say that F of 10 is 20. So this composite function that I'm talking about, it would be the direct flight. It would go from Sacramento directly to Newark, from gate five directly to gate 20, no need to stop off at gate 10. And the notation we use for that flight is F circle G. All right, so again, you've got G of five is 10. I'm using the mouse this time instead of the pad. I'm really not doing any worse, I don't think. And then flight uh, uh, function F, F of 10 is 20. So what uh, function F circle G does is it takes you directly from the number five Maybe I spoke too soon. No, I guess that's, I guess that's sort of decent. Function F circle G takes you from five directly to 20. Okay. All right, so that's my favorite analogy for function composition. So now let's have the, uh, the official definition. I'll talk about this in terms of my um, analogy a little bit also. All right, so here is the official definition of function composition. The composition of the function f with g is denoted f circle g and is defined by the equation f circle g of x equals f of g of x, okay? So in my airplane analogy, the number x got plugged into the function g first, that's one thing that's a little weird about this. You have to read it from the inside out, which ends up looking like you're reading it from right to left. Um, but that's the way it works. So, so it means that uh, function G is getting applied first, and then function F is getting applied to the answer. I think I'm going to skip talking about this domain stuff for right now. Well, maybe I'll very briefly say, 
Uh, so we have talked about domain before. Remember, domain is the set of all real numbers that work in your function, basically, right? When you put in a number and you get another number out, that means your function is working, all right? You're not doing anything like trying to divide by zero. So in order for this concept to work, uh, two things have to be true. Number one, G has to be in, I'm sorry, X has to be in the domain of G. Otherwise, this thing that I've just underlined won't be defined, okay? And then the number G of X has to be in the domain of F, okay? So again, back to my airplane analogy, I had put a number five in here. So G of five would need to be defined. That would mean five is in the domain of G. And then in my story, G of five came out to be 10. So for that to make sense, the number 10 would have to be in the domain of F. But I'm gonna talk more about domain in the pre-calc class. Just wanted to give you a little preview there. Okay, so what do we have next? Okay, an example of forming composition functions. So uh, uh, composite function, sorry. Given f of x is 5x plus 6, and g of x is 2x squared minus x minus 1, we want to find f circle g of x. Okay, so I'm going to show you how that works. I think this might be the slide that I had trouble animating, so you might see me... Um, if all the stuff comes up too fast, I will uh, go through and explain it all. And yes, it was that slide. All right. So here's how this works. First, use the definition of F circle G of X to say that means F of G of X. Okay. So the first question is, what is G of X? Well, G of X is 2X squared minus X minus 1. So you see the first step is to replace g of x with 2x squared minus x minus 1. Okay. Now, for this next part, you have to ask yourself, what does function f do? I think I will try to use the pen this time. Okay, so here's where I like to write the function f. with a blank space instead of, that's weird, <laughs> okay, I don't know, oh, it's because I was too close, okay, let me try that again, I thought I was doing so well there for a second, <laughs> okay, oh, I know what it is, okay, oh, la da 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 okay, so I'm gonna write the function f with a blank space instead of with an x. f of blank equals five blank plus six. So in the next step, right here, I am replacing, I'm putting two x squared minus x minus one in the blank. See how that works? Picture a 2x squared minus x minus 1 getting put here and then here. Okay. And then uh, after that, basically, you just have to clean it up. Okay. So distribute the 5, 10x squared minus 5x minus 5, and then you have this plus 6 on the end. You combine your like terms, you end up with 10x squared minus 5x plus 1. All right, so that brings us to our next example of forming a composite function. Uh, we're given these two functions, f of x equals four over x plus two, and g of x equals one over x. They want me to find f circle g of x. Uh, this might be a good one for uh, those of you watching the video to pause the video and try this one first. Uh, this one is, uh, I'd say, quite a bit more complicated than the last one, but uh, try it and, and see how you do and we'll compare notes. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try that. Let's see how it looks. I think this is another one of those where it just all comes up at once. 
So let's see what we have. Uh, F circle G again means uh, F of G of X. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace G of X with what G of X is. Okay. Then I have to think about what function F does. So I'm, I'm going to try this a little differently because it won't require me to do as much scribbling. Imagine that this was a blank space right here. So whatever goes into this function, this function is going to do 4 divided by whatever you put in plus 2. Okay. So if I put a box around this, and I put a box around this, and you can see that I just replaced what was in the box with 1 over x, because okay? that's what g of x is. All right, so that gives me 4 over 1 over x plus 2. Okay? Now, we haven't gone over in this class uh, simplifying rational expressions. I want to say that's section P6, maybe. Uh, and I do plan to do that section later, I think before we start the first section of chapter five. So that's probably, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks down the road. But I'll give you a sneak preview of how you can uh, simplify this thing. So this is what we call a complex fraction, and we don't really like these. So one way to uh, get rid of a complex fraction is to multiply the top and the bottom by the least common denominator that covers all the fractions. Now, this is a pretty good example because um, it's only got one fraction. Okay. So let me get rid of this box. And I'm going to put a set of parentheses around this 1 over x plus 2 because what's happening next is that the x is getting distributed to the 1 over x and the 2. Okay. So upstairs, it's very simple. You have 4 times x, which ends up being uh, 4x. And then 1 over x times x is just 1, right? So that becomes a 1. And then 2 times x is 2x. So when you take the composition of these two functions and clean it up, you end up with 4x over 1 plus 2x. All right, that brings us to our last example. So this is kind of the backwards version of what we've just been doing. They're giving me this function, and they want me to find two functions called f and g for which this function is f circle g of x. Okay. So using my analogy from earlier, this is the direct flight. How could you break this into two uh, connecting flights? Okay. So here's how I like to do a problem like this. And by the way, this is an important concept for uh, calculus, end of Calc 1 and uh, just about all of Calc 2. All right, when we do something called integration by substitution, you have to be able to take apart uh, composite functions. Okay, so here's how I like to do these. Uh, again, we need to find uh, two functions f and g such that h of x is f circle g of x. So what I want to do is think about what this function h of x does. It takes a number the first thing it does is squares that number, takes you from x to x squared. The next thing it does is adds 5, and that brings you to x squared plus 5. And the last thing it does is takes the square root. So when you're thinking about your functions f and g, what you want to do is just divide up that work among the two functions. All right. Now, this is one place where the order in function composition is very important. Remember that when you're doing f circle g, the function that gets the first crack at the number x is g, all right, because it goes from the inside out. Remember, this is f of g of x. So the first function that gets to go is g. So one way to do this, and it's not the only way, would be to have g do steps one and two. So the function g will take the number, 
uh, square it and then add five. And that's all function G will do. It'll take a number, square it and add five. So that'll make function G X squared plus five. And the only thing that F has to do is get that number from G and take the square root. So when it's getting the number, function F doesn't care what happened to the number before. It doesn't care that it got squared and then added five. F doesn't even know that that happened. So it's just getting a number from G and taking the square root. So all, all function F is doing is taking the square root. That makes function F, F of X equals the square root of X.